Hey everybody, it's Saturday again, so it's time for another RuneScape wrap-up, and uh, in this episode, episode number two, I'm actually going to be including a live face cam type of thing in it, and I just thought that that would be nice, because I don't really have any background footage to play for you guys. So last episode, my first episode, I just kind of had a image that I put up, but on um, this episode, I'm going to have my um, face in the center of the video, and then around the outside of the video, I'm going to have a bunch of different links. If you click over here, you can follow me on Twitter. If you click over here, you can subscribe right down here. Click subscribe, you know you want to click it. Over here, you have all of my series that I've done, Bossing the Bibles, um, Road to Max Cape, some other stuff like that. And then along the bottom here, I'm going to have different like links to the different points in the video that you can go to. If you want to watch just a certain topic, you can jump to that. So those will be all down here. And um, yeah, I'll be throwing some other annotations up around here, so just watch out for that. You can click some of them. And if you don't want to actually like watch this physically, you can just kind of minimize this and listen to it while you scape, do something productive. Um, so yeah, if we get into it, um, I'm, I don't have a guest star this episode because I just didn't have anyone else that was able to do it with me tonight. Um, that sounded a little weird, but let's go. Um, so the first thing to talk about is HTML5 beta is coming out. So that is going to be in the next month or two, there's going to be a beta for HTML5. We don't know if it's going to be closed or open beta. But we do know that they are working on switching the game over to HTML5 base, which is going to improve different graphical problems, improve the overall graphics of the game, and it is also going to provide some stability things, some FPS fixes, other stuff like that. And it is due for a release in April, which is actually pretty impressive. I and most of my friends that actually were kind of paying attention to this, we all thought that they probably weren't going to be getting this out till late summer, fall, maybe even winter. But um, it looks like they're on top of things with this, so that is great. April, we can switch over to HTML5. Um, yeah, I really, I support the HTML5 thing a lot more now than I did when they originally announced it, and that is because now Java has had a lot of problems with its security and running it in a web browser. So I've kind of disabled all the Java on my computer. I made a video about the security problem with that, but basically it was just kind of letting people get into your computer and do things that they really should not be doing with your computer, so it was not a very good thing. And um, if you have Java now on your computer, just be careful. I wouldn't really go to any links if you don't know the person like in real life. And um, unless you do know exactly what the site is and you check the URL, but like if you play Minecraft or something like that, you're going to need Java. If you're just playing RuneScape, I just use the client for now until they can switch over to HTML5. But uh, that's enough of that. So the next topic that I have, these are just kind of the so short subtopics of the video. And the next topic is that Jagex is considering changing the requirement for trimmed comp cape of 5k Castle Wars games. And... So I've got some mixed feelings on this. Um, as you guys know, I am not a trimmed comp caper. I'm not even a comp caper. But I still, I really pay attention to the game. I kind of try and feel, like, figure out how people feel about a bunch of different things and just kind of get an overall sense of what the community feels like. And overall, um, from a couple people that I talked to about this, one was a comp caper who is going for trimmed comp, and the other guys are just kind of people shooting for max cape, along with myself, I'm shooting for a max cape. Um, they all said, including the comp caper, that it sounds like a great idea, only if you're thinking about yourself and people who aren't trimmed comp capers. But when you think about trimmed comp capers, people who already have the cape, like Dardan, Wooks, all those other people, I can't name them all, but it's almost 200 people. Um, they've put a lot of time and effort into getting 5k Castle Wars games. It's 80 days of playtime in Castle Wars. And granted, most people just AFK Castle Wars now. They don't actually play it, they just kind of sit there. And that's how a lot of them get it. But still, 80 days of playtime is a lot of time. So if they do cut that requirement down or change that in some way, which makes it a lot easier, 
then they're going to definitely need to find some way to compensate all the people who have already gotten a trimmed comp cape just because it's really like it's almost beyond unfair like you've made them waste that much XP for so long to get that and then you just made it not worth as much so I don't know they're gonna f need to find a way to do something about that but I am hoping that maybe they change Castle Wars around and make it more fun um, maybe if they added something where like after you score so many flags you like the game ends like if you have like a five flag lead or something like that then the game would end and you wouldn't have to wait the full 20 minutes um, if they can do some sort of change like that, I might even start liking Castle Wars a little bit. But overall, they just kind of need to change that mini game, and then hopefully they don't make that requirement not as um, like make it a lot easier without doing anything to the people who've already gotten it. They need to find some way to compensate them with that. Okay, guys. So this next topic is going to stem off into a larger topic, and that is what's been flying around the RuneScape YouTube community lately. Pretty much every video maker of any importance has been talking about this, and it's been all over the Reddit and forums and everything. So, um, yeah, it's let's get into the first part that I wanted to talk about, and that is that Modmark made a forum post on February first, which was yesterday, and it is called RuneScape Old and New. And what this is going over, I'll have the link and quick find code in the description below if you guys want to go check it out yourself. But um, basically what he's been saying is that they have been paying attention. Their community team has been on Twitter very active, very active on Reddit reading through all of the posts. There was a guy on there, a high school junior, that was writing a paper and he needed to talk to a video game developer. And I think it was only maybe 19 20 minutes or something like that after he made a post on there that someone from Jagex contacted him and set up a meeting where they could talk and he could interview them and that was just amazing that really caught my eye as something that is just really good that Jagex is doing that and it's just it's pretty amazing I never really thought that their community team would get that far that they were I don't know somewhat good um so that's kind of interesting, but anyway, this is talking about how a lot of people have had a lot of different things to say about the game. There have been people suggesting that they make a single player version of RuneScape, a version of RuneScape in which where you die, you your character dies too, which I just thought was really humorous because um if they made that, I just I, I don't see RuneScape being a game where you could actually implement that in there, because everyone like especially PVMers and PKers, you try and push yourself to your limits, and you're going to end up dying at some point in time. So you max out an account or get an account perfect for what you want to do, and then it just kind of dies on you. Um, I mean it's wonderful in Diablo to have like a hardcore character like that. But in RuneScape, I just, I cannot see that working at all. So, um, yeah, there's also, he mentioned something about people wanting RuneScape to return to as it was in 2006. He pretty much went through the entire list of anything that anyone has suggested that RuneScape do, going back to old combat, going back to what it was in 2006, and just everything else in the game. And he's just been saying in this uh, post that they are looking and they are reading through pretty much all the forums that they can all the like reddit posts that they can anything that they can find on twitter and on any of the like runescape sites like not the fan sites um so they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to be doing and on the 20th of february there's going to be another q and a session and there they will be talking about um the other great content they have planned for this year and they just kind of want to kind of talk about some things that they're going to be doing with that. They want to be putting out an update to the evolution of combat. They're trying to put out an update every month, like a major one. We've had buffs to the bosses, uh, armor buffs, a bunch of other different things, and it seems that they're just kind of trying to pay attention to us and fine-tune the EOC to us. I don't think that it's realistic to get rid of the EOC, but it is nice that they are kind of listening to us and doing a little bit to kind of try and change the game and how we want it, but how they want it as well. Because um, when it comes down to it, we're the players. But a lot of it is you can't just take the most vocal people in the community 
and try to just fine tune the game to them because usually when you're satisfied with something you're not really making a big deal out of it but when you're aggravated with something you're gonna make a big deal so they can't just pay attention to everything that is being made into a big deal otherwise they might end up aggravating some other players so they have to be really careful with what they do here but they are trying to listen and that's the main point of his post so talking about Modmark's forum post um, I believe that the reason that he made that post, the true reason is uh, Sorex petition and so I, I feel like that forum post has been building for a while and it's been long due but I feel that what really got it out there and what got Modmark to fully write it and post it and everything was Sorex petition and that is now well over 25,000 signatures and first of all what I have to say with the signatures part is there is no way to track the signatures down and make sure that only like for every signature there's no way to tell that on, that person only signed it once because there could easily be a person that is signing it multiple times over and over again so you have to keep in mind that with any statistic there's always way to always ways to manipulate that data so you just have to keep that in mind however 25,000 signatures is still a lot of signatures and a lot of legit people signing that. So that really does deserve attention. And I think that a lot of the like tension has been really building up in the PK community for a while now. And the EOC is kind of the breaking point of that. Um, I'd have to say that it was probably when Gano came, or yeah, it was probably Storm of Armadil and Gano that were kind of like getting to the top of the mountain and then EOC is what kind of hit the person and made them fall off and that's kind of I don't know a crappy little metaphor for you but I kinda of think that's how it went and so with Sorex petition he's basically trying to get them to bring back before the EOC trying to get them to go and make servers that have the combat system before it was um, evolved, I guess, into the evolution of combat. So, with that, um, I actually, I think it's somewhat a good idea. I, I don't fully agree with it, because what, I think that the way that he has it worded and everyone is taking it is to make a fully separate server, kind of like RuneScape Classic to RuneScape 2 type of thing, and it, that would be just like a full out server for RuneScape without the evolution of combat. And I feel that that just is not a feasible thing. It's not something that could really happen because Jagex doesn't have like, they can't just double their dev team because any piece of content that comes out now is going to be tailored to the EOC. Hit points are changed and defense is now um, just everything like it's exponential and just so many things have changed with combat that just to put out a quest you have to make that quest twice except for like the text that goes into it so I just I don't see that happening however what I do see working is something that I am personally hoping for and that would be to make a couple PK worlds and these PK worlds would not have any content in them so if you're a PVMer and you loved the combat system before EOC, I'm sorry, but I just don't see that as being able to be brought back. However, for all of you PKers out there, they would they could make a couple different worlds that would still be on the world select list, the same server as everyone else, and those worlds would be strictly PK. So there would be no way for you to go and like bring in items to the game. You'd have to take your normal evolution of combat items and you take them into that world and then it would be a full PK world. There would be no place to go skill or PVM or anything. Or maybe they could use that and so for instance like you could go to Corp if you wanted to but people could also kill you there. So just like a full blown PK world I think would be really awesome. They could incorporate a lot of different things with that. There is an item sinkhole type of thing coming out soon, but I feel that if they made a PK world, they could easily incorporate another sinkhole that would make food 
armor, weapons, everything go up even more. And so that would make PVMers happy and skillers happy as well, which I think would just be wonderful, as well as making PKers happy because they have a world in which they can PK in and have a good time there. So that's just kind of my idea for it. I don't see it being feasible to make a separate server that is full blown like a private server. I just I don't see that being something that could happen. But if they do make a couple different worlds that were PK worlds, maybe even add some incentives. I think I mentioned this in a Bossing the Bibles or a Road to Max Cape, that maybe you could make um, some different weapon drops or armor drops, kind of like how they have in the Crucible, but not exactly. And then maybe even have some different things, kind of like the Brawler Glove system that will help with skilling or something like that, but maybe have it limited to combat skills, but better XP than Brawler Gloves. Um, just There's a bunch of different things that they can do with that. And I think that if they got just those couple worlds up and running, that it would just it would really draw back a lot of legitimate players to the community. Because right now the private server industry is just booming because the EOC got so many people who love RuneScape to just be frustrated and say I'm done with it, and they've moved on to a private server or they've moved on to Xbox or PS3. They're doing some other type of gaming or like League of Legends, World of Warcraft, whatever. But if you moved back and like you put these worlds into the game, you could draw back a lot of those people, which would bring in more revenue for Jagex, which might even let them open a couple more worlds and add some more content to that, really work with the PK community to try and get something out there that they could really like. And I just think that overall, adding the worlds might work, and they could do that and get that up and running. But adding an entirely separate server, I don't think that would really just be able to happen. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this week's RuneScape wrap-up. I tried to keep it a little bit brief, but um, yeah, so next week I will have a co-host on with me, and if you guys have any questions that you want answered or you want us to discuss a topic, you can tweet me with hashtag RSWU in your tweet, and then I will know to answer it with this in next week's episode or the following week, whenever you guys ask but um, you can also inbox me if you don't have a Twitter and don't want to make one. You can inbox me on YouTube or even just leave a comment on the video. So pretty much anything that you guys want me to talk about next week, I will talk about it. Unless it's something really stupid. But um, even then I might mention it for comical purposes. You never know. So just give it a go. But um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And just let me know what you think about the stuff that I talked about in this episode. I'm mainly interested to hear what you guys think about my idea for the PK worlds instead of a separate server. Um, so let me know about that. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. So uh, yeah, I'll see you next week for another RuneScape wrap-up.